Hello. We can just do dancing. <laughs> no, and we I'm cannot. Not... <laughs> you can immediately tell all the personalities. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cut the Shit, Cue the Genius show, episode 44. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm Dahlia Elgazar. I'm with Liz King and with Bruno, Michelle Bruno. And we have an amazing guest with us today, Cindy with Red Velvet. Where are you beaming in from today? I am Cindy? coming live you? from Austin, Texas. Today's Woo! a little bit overcast, but normally we are 80 degrees at this time of year. So it's nice. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. And welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Cut the Shit Show. And Sean, you beat me to it. Right Happy on time. M-I-D to everyone. Woohoo! So I think everybody around is celebrating. I hope they do take a couple of minutes to... Uh, log in and and uh, and join this conversation of geniusness that's going to happen right now. We are discussing uh, what corporate event planners want, uh, need, and what they're trying to stay away from. And I think it's a sign of the times because things are changing. Cindy, you're going to share with us a couple of examples and hopefully best practices on how we can handle corporate planners that are ugly crying or happy poster, <laughs> poster so but you just came back from south by southwest yes how many years have you been going to south by southwest we have been going for 20 years since 2003 so before it was cool i said so before it's been a it long cool. time that is amazing you probably they had taco trucks and stuff correct actually you know what's funny i <laughs> remember back to lunch what? i i was looking back at my very first south by event Mm -hmm. And I realized, wow, we've come a long way because I thought it was pretty cool what we did back then. But now I look at it and I'm laughing. I'm like, that's like a happy hour. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, so happy GMID. Yes. And I did that on purpose. So Shapiro can be all like jacked up on Java and espresso by the time this show is <laughs> over. So I'm going to try to say it as much as possible. GMID, GMID. <laughs> exactly. There we go. But um, so, Cindy, in in this year's South by Southwest and I and I had I really wanted just to like watch it from here. And so yeah. that was interesting seeing all like the um, not only the pictures and stuff like that, but uh, on social media, but the articles that were being generated like mm -hmm. on the spot. It was it was a machine yeah. this year, I think so. More than, but more than ever. Let's start with the coolness of yep. 2023 with South by Southwest. So wow. the up positive things is that Hugh Force with South by Southwest was able to confirm with me that this year the attendance was larger than 2022's attendance. Nice. Um, it wasn't as large as 2019, and definitely not as large as what originally sold for 2020. But we're getting back there. Um, the cool stuff for me, my personal favorite was Roku City. However, when we were talking it over with the team, uh, we had several strong advocates for Amazon Prime, but let me tell you why I think both of these really stood out. They went above and beyond. And now I have to say, I think it also has to do with the fact that they're in media. So yeah. when you have media involved, they are going to take it to the next level of detail. So mm -hmm. in Roku City, it was only a, a three-day activation, actually, no, sorry, two-day activation. And they literally transformed one of our uh, venues into what they would, what you normally see if you are a Roku user, that little city stream that uh, comes on, they transformed it in real life. And now I am not a Roku user, so I did not actually know this. So I had to ask them, I go, can you help me understand? I see that everything's purple and that you've got the scene. And they go, ah, this is what we play in Roku, every Roku user. And all of our fans and our community base have fallen in love with this and have, have taken it to a whole nother level. They brought in not only actors and actresses, wow. but they really made sure that you came in and you felt a part of that scene so you could be a part of it in different ways. That's and to right. me, that was really cool. Uh, Amazon Prime did an excellent job as well. They had a lot of details and they were, of course, highlighting certain shows that were doing very well on Amazon Prime. Um, the, the, the streaming service, that is, not the, the shipping. <laughs> I should have clarified that. So I guess it's Amazon Prime Plus. Um, and they involved all, all the five senses, music, uh, activations, uh, food, uh, sound. So it was just, it was very, very well thought out. And so those things, I really, really appreciated it. And yeah. there were, again, a lot of media companies that were in town that did a beautiful job. Nice. And, and that 
is actually what leads to my next point is that that's what was different. Normally in the past, we would see these activations from tech companies, Mm -hmm. but sadly because of all the tech layoffs and even uh, Silicon Valley bank announced their, you know, um, uh, what happened, their uh, devastating news on the Friday of South by Southwest, the first day that we kicked off, it was very obvious that the tech companies were not activating as much as the media companies were. Hmm. Very big difference. So they had activations and they just decided not to do them or? I wouldn't even say they had activations, to be honest. They Mm -hmm. might have sponsored a lunch or a dinner or they had some smaller Mm -hmm. presence, but they were definitely not as present as before. And that really hurts, to be honest, because normally in a given year for us, we are usually tied to anywhere from six to 10 activations. And this year we were only tied to two. Mm -hmm. And actually two and a half, I should give credit to another half. So two and a half. So that shows you how big of a difference it was for us, for us as a team. So that was painful. So, so that, that's the cool part. So since event planners love to hear about epic fails and epic shit, like the shitty stuff, it's like a shit storm happening, you know, shit shows slow-mo. It happens slow motion and you can't stop it. And we know what's going on in the background. Like, and it's like killing us because it's like, you want to go in a kitchen and clean it up, but you yeah. really don't want yeah, to. Yeah. So did you see any shit shows happening? So I didn't personally, but my team did see some. So, but I'm going to leave their names out. Okay. I'm just going to okay, give you examples. Okay? You because, because again, no. these are not our activations and, and, and we know how stressful it is guys. Right. We know. So let's be, let's give them some grace, but I'm going to be very honest. I, I will say, I think the reason why these happen is because they don't know Austin. So that was one of my actually biggest complaints is I did walk around because I'm obviously very curious by all the build outs. And I was very surprised to see all these build outs that didn't even involve, even if they don't choose red velvet, choose someone else locally in Austin. And they didn't. That's so one point. example was that it was supposed to open, I believe at noon. And one of our team members slacked out and goes, they are definitely not ready. Do not come by this house. It's not ready. And then I said, okay, I'll come back in about two hours and, and check that out. And um, two hours go by. She's like, they are still not ready. Now you've got to remember it is showtime. This is a live activation. It is go or like, it's not like, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to open tomorrow because literally these activations run either from like one day to all the way they can run like the Adobe house ran all, all nine days, but usually most run two to four days. So Mm -hmm. when you open late and you've already have it publicized everywhere that you're opening at noon, to me, that looks a bit sloppy and it it was a big brand. Um, the second, this was a debate on our team. So obviously we're in the immersive brand experience space and our team is very proud of all the things we touch and ideate and come up with creatively. And one of the big things is they go, an activation is not just a photo booth. (laughs) So (laughs) that was, yeah, that is true. Exactly. Now I will say we have worked with some very creative photo booth companies that have come up with some really creative activations. So I will say, you know, let's spin this a little bit differently. I am talking about your traditional photo booth where I stand in front of a backdrop, snap the photo, and then it emails me. Okay. That's what I'm calling a traditional photo booth. There were several, what I will call houses that were, I would say, if you're going to spend this much money and invest at, at, at South by Southwest, you probably should take the time to be a little bit more creative than just say that this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yes, free food, free booze. Um, obviously, uh, good uh, speaking content panels are very, very much needed and welcome. But you should have something more than just a photo booth as your activation. That is kind of a wonk wonk. And that's also I kind of use the um, chocolate um, chocolate oh. uh, the chocolate uh, bar uh, example uh, where uh, you remember how for a long time it that was um, the 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 hottest item. But then once Bed Bath and Beyond sold it, I was like, guys. This is not a hot item anymore for catering. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? It's the, it's the chocolate fountain. Sorry, chocolate the fountain. fountain. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, so right now, I feel like we're going in that phase right now is that I've seen that, I've done that. What's next? Like, don't do that because South by is for creatives and you want to be the one that goes, wow, I wish I had thought of that. That was cool. Well, I, 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 that's what you want to be known for stickiness, you know? Yeah, it's where you steal ideas. Yes, I mean, or borrow. Yeah. Hey, let's or, or one borrow. off it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. No, that's perfect. I mean, the the I think we've come to a point right now is like if you're going to invest, so that's one. And I know you're yes. going to talk about ROI, but also from an t- attendee experience is like you're investing your time 
you don't want yet just another photo booth, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I and get it because people are like, oh, but my logo's on the bottom of that of that photo. And I'm like, no, that there is more to this yeah. than just your your logo just being printed on a on a photo. <laughs> so so segue here yeah. is the corporate event planners right now, mm -hmm. what is their, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> because like, what the heck is going well, on? So again, based on your title, I'm going to be very transparent, very honest, but just because again. This is why you're yeah. here. <laughs> okay. I mean, like, we don't want any sugar coating. Yeah. So. And thank you, by the way, for three of y'all having me, because that was a, such an honor when y'all reached and out. happy GMID day. Yes. Happy GMID again, day. Again, GMID yes. day. No, <laughs> Tell us, tell so, us because there is a lot going yes. on right now. So first, if you have not touched base with any of your clients, you should recognize that there has been an almost 100% turnover in the C-suite. Mm -hmm. That means most likely whoever you are working with in 2019 or 2020 is not the same person. And if they are the same person, they're most likely leaving soon or they're about to be laid off. And I'm being very honest. It has been so tumultuous. It has been so hard, that road of reconnecting with people that you've got to recognize that unfortunately the people that we were working with in 2019 and 2020 may not even be there anymore. Then that leads to the second thing because this has been such a tumultuous ride. And right now everyone's just scared of thank you, mahogany of <laughs> what their job, like if their job is at risk, I've had so many multiple conversations with C level executives where they said, Cindy, Unless I know that you and Red Velvet are going to literally take the fall if something goes wrong, okay, for the event, activation, or immersive, I am not going to go out on a limb and bring in a new agency. That is what they've literally said to me in multiple conversations. They said, so I'm going to go with someone that I know will take the fall for me. So that is something that made me think, you know, I was like, but we are, we are kind of like, we're in this together, you know, we are going to take that fall for you because we know we want to make you guys shine. So right. why would you not trust us? But that's the part. If there is not that trust and they don't feel like your team is in it to win it with them, they are not going to go out on a limb and bring in a new agency. So even if my competitor is 10 times more expensive than me, or maybe they're not as reliable as our team, they're still willing to go with that team because they know that they will take the fall for them instead of them losing their job. And that is where the reality is right now of event marketers. And, and that is tough because I am trying to obviously convince some of our, 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 our oldest clients to come back to us. But, but because they are all new people in place in these roles, we are trying to rebuild this relationship and ask them for, you know, to, to lean in on us. And, and as I told you all earlier when we were prepping for this is that I'm not saying we were perfect by any means. In 2022, we made our fair share of mistakes. But one of the things I'm most proud of on our team is that we do, we hold ourselves accountable. So when we made those mistakes, we raised our hands and we said, look, we, we did make this mistake, but let's fix this together. And we are going to go with you all the way down to the end of until the event activates and, and it's live because we are a hundred percent accountable for our actions. Which I, I mean, I'm, I was going to say it, it makes total sense but the amount of work and energy it takes to rebuild or build those relationships. Yes. And Arthur sh shared a very interesting stat that 50, 58% of the current events industry are new to the industry. Yes. So like we, we're talking about, you know, it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of educating and it's a, yeah, it is. It truly is. Yes. Liz, are you finding that as well with your current clients? Yeah. I mean, I think um, part of it is driven by budget that they mm -hmm. are having to go back to the drawing board. I know that long-term clients of ours and of other planners that we know are going back to RFP and opening up, even if they've worked with the same planner for the last 10 years, they want to know, is this the best deal we can get? Is this the, and, and it is largely driven by price. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are seeing that and we are seeing the opposite too, that people just want to stick with what they know because they don't want to take any risks right now. They don't want to. And so there's kind of, I'm seeing both sides, um, but both are not great for. Players. Oh, it's not great for either of us. And either and side is good. They're either trying to undercut you or yeah. they're just going with the flow. There are, so you're stopping at Walmart for the leftover. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and since Liz brought up the price, that was one of my points is that inflation is very real. And I actually yeah. posted publicly on Julius's recent post where he said budgets are flat and people aren't willing to budge. So I'm saying then 
it is our job as professionals to educate them on what you can get. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not going to adjust your budget, that's fine. But then you need to adjust your headcount or you need to adjust your expectations. Expectation, yeah. Expectation. Because there is no way you can do a hybrid event right now for the cost of what, we, what, what I would have called an IRL event. There is no way because it is two events. That, is a, that means you double the cost, maybe one and a half times the cost, okay? But it is not the original budget that you gave it in 2019, 2020 for an in real life event. And that's the part uh, that I don't think people are eye to eye. And, and Even so, in person is yes. not apples to apples. I mean, yeah. you're talking cool. about dramatic increase in costs yeah. for every single line item. Yep. And everyone wants to keep the budgets the same. Correct. And then so they, they have to decide. They and then they want the planners to take the fall yeah. when it doesn't achieve their goals. Hence why the most stressful <laughs> job in the world. And why yeah, I love exactly. it still, I love the challenge. <laughs> the number three. <laughs> Moving up on that list. <laughs> Bruno, do you have any thoughts about this? I have a question. So... Inside B2B events, uh, we have long been enamored with the idea of festivals yes. as uh, business generating, you know, yep. form factors. In fact, somebody even coined this term festivalization. I so heard for a that, yeah. Every speaker was like, hey, you know, we're going to festivalize our trade show. Yeah. So my question to you is, are high level uh, brands going to festivals like South by or others? Mm -hmm. And are they finding potential clients and leads and prospects and doing business with whomever is there? Because when I went to South by it was it I, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see the, the sort of potential future customer base there amongst the people standing in line for the tacos and hanging out on whatever Sixth Street, getting over, yeah. you know, overindulging in the festival experience. So like, What's the point? What's yeah. working? You know, yeah. is festival the thing? So I'm going to try to answer that in three. Find something else. You know? No, I'm going to try to answer that in three parts. So first is our company still coming. They definitely were still here. Um, I definitely could feel it. I met them. However, because South by, as an example, as a festival, is so large, you really do have to lean in on these smaller one-offs. What I mean by that is, for example, UK House decided to go ahead and have their one-off topics and invite certain people at certain times. Yes, it was open to the public, but at key times, they invited uh, people that they thought they, they could meet together. In fact, um, they had an, an agency meeting on a Saturday morning of when they kicked off, and I thought that was actually one of the better meetups I had been at at South by Southwest because they recognized how to bring all the people that were in town already together in one space and meet each other. So that's the key of how you maximize your time at South by because it is so large. It is so important to make sure you tell people who, who you are looking for, be very vocal about that and mention it on all what I call the like public social media. So either making your Facebook post public, putting it on LinkedIn and explaining who you want, because it is about who, you know, how you get invited to these private meetups or the smaller meetups, because that's how you benefit from that. Second is, I have always said that you go to South by for at least the very first time is because you're curious to get inspired. I wouldn't say you're going to go there and, and get a lead unless you are specifically going and meeting someone that you have been hounding and you know they're there and you kind of, you know, partner up and, and hang out with them. But to me, this is definitely uh, more of a festival to inspire and, and get ideas from and kind of like what <laughs> Dahlia said earlier, steal the ideas of, and take it back to your own event. Now that leads me to the third point, which is why a festivalization becomes so popular because back in the days when these big brands were doing bigger and bigger trade shows slash conferences, they realized that the traditional method, having your general session, having the breakout session, and then having the trade show floor was getting boring and festivalization gave it that little bit of a hint of what I'm actually going to rebrand it as it was immersive. So instead, encouraging your sponsors and your exhibitors, don't just throw up a, a pop-up, like a roll-up banner and whatnot. Tell me more about your brand. I'm going to use actually Dahlia's as an example. I love the fact that she was giving LinkedIn tips, redoing their LinkedIn and taking headshots at her booth. Don't just tell me what you do. Actually do it for me at the booth. That to me is called immersive brand experiences. And that is what we want to see when you're sponsoring and exhibiting at a show. Not just, hey, come here, let me tell you a little bit about my product and oh, put your, put your business card in and we're gonna draw a raffle for a free iPad. That is so 1990, 2000. 
we are now in 2023. There's better ways to activate your you, brand. You just Makes need sense. like 50 people ugly cry right now because <laughs> that was their activation. Business card in the fishbowl. I'm well, sorry, but it's true. Yeah. Don't do that. So, no, right, yeah. right now <laughs> they're like, like, oh my God, she just ruined my idea. There like, is but so, you no, actually please. see the headshots because Dahlia would work the line as people were waiting. And all the headshots had Dahlia in them. Oh, like, no. were kind of chatting. And people are like, no, Dahlia. Get to the back of the line, dude. So that's why I think festivalization became work because let, let me be honest, South by Southwest did not boom overnight, but it did very well because these brands that got smarter, they activated more cleverly during the show, the festival itself. And, yeah. and some of the ones that I share the most are, are very non-traditional. So, yeah. so as an example, I mean, we, we, this was over a decade ago. So this app, unfortunately, sold since then. But the idea was they wanted us to have people help them download the app as much as possible. And I said, you know what, given your budget and given what you need to do, I am going to suggest that we actually make this a roaming activation. So because you can't afford to do a house, <laughs> you can't afford to do any of this, we're going to make this roaming. And instead, what we did is I actually had seen Michael Cervelli's um, pogo stick jumpers, those professional pogo stick jumpers. Mm -hmm. We hired three of them. We branded them in their t-shirt of this app. I also hand, hired brand ambassadors and we literally pogo sticked around all of Austin, the entire key days. And we, we would make them download the app and That's then show fantastic. us a proof of the app. And then they got entered in, of course, into a further sweepstakes and whatnot. But that was a fun, fun, fun experience because again, people were talking about and trying to catch up with where the pogo stick jumpers were just to even film because they, we would do live like uh, performances uh, for like a minute or two at random street corners. That's awesome. Yeah. Hmm. But again, you have to know, have the right crazy. permit. So no Austin. Okay, guys, don't just do that without a permit. <laughs> oh. So, I mean, is it working though for the brands? I mean, how do you measure immersion? So that is a great question. And that is actually one of the other points is that ROI has not gone away, guys. It's all, honestly, it's increased. I, I, I put it back on the client first is to tell me, what are you measuring as success? So going back to what you just asked, Michelle, is... If they are saying it has to be downloaded apps, then we have to ask them first is how many users really downloaded the app before so that we can compare obviously afterwards because we wanna make sure that these are truly new users that downloaded it. And second is, do they are they also even measuring how, they, how engaged they are? Because that is a tricky beast. Because uh, again, I don't have privy to that na naturally, that access of that information, mm -hmm. but we have to convince the developers to share that information with the marketing team so that we can all win when we can show that that's what their measurement is. But mm -hmm. you should be having that conversation prior to ideating so that we really understand, is it realistic on measuring that ROI? Mm -hmm. And also what the run rate is, meaning do we have six months to measure how many new users or do we only have those three days that we're jumping around Austin, you know? because that does make a difference. So is it, uh, is it safe to say that if they cannot quantify what they're there to do, what they wanna measure yeah. and prove that they've actually done that, maybe they shouldn't be there or their activation? I, I think they should, re, be, they need to probably rethink about how they're justifying the expense because a lot of things we do, they're mm -hmm. not cheap. And I, and I admit it, I, I'm, I'm, I know they're not cheap. So we need to justify that cost because otherwise you're doing it just for um, what I would call guerrilla marketing. And, and as long as the C level executives are all on board with this, especially the CFO, I, I don't feel good about that unless I know that there are metrics that we can tie it back to. Mm -hmm. Well, Arthur I mean, has I guess a event like South. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead, Liz. But Arthur has a good question for Cindy. Yeah, he does actually. I wanted to ask that. Um, but I was just going to say some of, uh, I would imagine participating in a South by event, is, you know, the McDonald's billboard idea. It's just yes. brand awareness. Like at the end yep. of the day, you're not there. They check your name off the list of companies that are no longer relevant. And so I'm sure there's a strict ROI, but at the same time, yeah. I'm sure part of that ROI is just if we're not there. Yep. <laughs> there definitely. I would say the bigger the brand, that is very true. Yeah. Because yeah, to me, like I noticed things. which yeah. uh, automotive brands dropped out and which ones came in at South by this year. But I don't know if other ones were paying as close attention, you know? 
it's it's top of mind, you yeah. know. The brands who were there will be the first ones who yeah. come to mind when someone's looking to buy a car or whatever. But yeah. Arthur did have a good question. Yeah. And I have seen the a big rise in QR code use after the pandemic with people yes. trying to be more hands-off and stuff. So he's wondering if you saw many QR codes or NFC type activations instead of, you know, yep. the old fishbowl thing. No, QR codes for sure, the, the hands down. The only activation I saw where they were tying it back to NFT, like the, the uh, you know, the Pog uh, Pogo was Porsche. And that is a huge difference from 2022. In 2022, I must have seen, oh my gosh, at least 50% of the activations tie it back to NFT in some way. Whereas this year, I only saw Porsche tie it back to NFT. And so that was very eye-opening to me that the shift, because keep in mind, Austin is the host city to consensus uh, 2023 in a few weeks. So, so Bitcoin and crypto is still a very hot topic. So I was honestly very surprised to see the, the dip or maybe I shouldn't be because again, since tech kind of dipped out and, 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 you know, FTX kind of crashed, it probably was a uh, hand in, you know, it was, it was writing was on the wall that both of them would not participate as actively. What about, you know, like Arthur's talking about NFC too, like was, were there many activations where you just tap your phone on, a, you know, a, something versus a uh, you know qr code yes and they streamlined participation or payments in such a way that so there aren't really that many payments because everything is pretty much hosted so just mm -hmm. know that that once you get to to south by there's even a blog that says hey if you ever had to pay for food during your 10 days you're doing it wrong <laughs> um, <laughs> an event yeah. With your phone or yeah but there is but here's one thing that i will tell you that it is tricky sometimes if the wi-fi connection wasn't as good so people still had to rely. I always say have a backup just in case the Wi-Fi signal is not as strong. And especially we have a still a huge international population that comes to South by and not all of them will have roaming turned on. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a backup or you better pay for the free Wi-Fi so that you can connect on site there. Mm -hmm. um, there was definitely um, most most common is everyone had to sign up to be able to get into a house. So that was all done on phone. Now, I'm going to be honest, the. 100% equitable, we need to be aware that not everyone has a cell phone. I know 99.9% .9 of people do, but mm -hmm. I, I've always cringe a little bit when I see that and I don't see an alternative because to me, everything was QR driven. And basically it had like a big QR code before you even skewed in the line that says, have you registered? Are you on the list? Because like, if you don't have that, you can't come in. And I, I feel like there has to be a backup way just in case you really don't have a smartphone. But um, I, I also feel like there's a growing distaste for social media, for phones, for all kinds of things that millennials use to connect. But Gen Z is sort of like pushing back on all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that could be something to think yeah, about. That's definitely something to think about. I haven't seen it yet in, in, in 2023 mm -hmm. South by. So that will be very interesting if that is the case. Mm -hmm. um, because I definitely saw phones everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Shapiro has one question. Happy yes. GMID, Shapiro. Um, <laughs> wonder how the espresso is going. But it is a it, it is a good question in regards to, and we discussed this before the show. Is how often are the clients prepared with that info of knowing their goals, their objectives, et cetera, prior to the event? And is the runway getting shorter? I mean, it, I personally think the runway is definitely getting shorter. I would say it's about 50-50 on our side of what we're seeing. Because mm -hmm. when we ask the, the person that actually maybe started the conversation with us, sadly, a lot of them don't know. And they say they, they have to get them. back to us. And then, so we're still, you know, parallel planning and producing. And, and then finally, when they come back to us and they go, okay, we got it. This is what we're going to do. And we're like, oh, we've already signed off on these and this. And so it's a little bit of a dance. And so that's the problem is that a lot of times we're operating. Well, here's the other thing too. C-level executives are operating here and they're not necessarily communicating to their uh, marketing manager or their events director what they want. And so that's where they're not aligned. And so we, we usually do remind our events managers, like, don't just take literally verbatim what they ask you to do. Please ask them what is their five year, what's even their one year goal? Because we got to make sure that this activation or this conference or or the sponsorship matches up because it's going to it's going to bite us if, if it doesn't. You know? So, so what, what have they learned in the last couple of years? 
Like have well, that's why I said they've learned that if they don't if they don't trust their partners, they drop you like a hot a cold yeah, <laughs> like but, a hot potato. I guess. I, so I just feel like yeah. I mean, Paul Cook even said we're in 2023, and some yeah. of the recent events that he's seen are stuck in the past, and that's true. But like more so, it's the same um, way of planning or yeah. strategizing or like yeah. oh budgets budgets yeah. could be flat, but wait, are you not seeing that AV? You know, it's some people more. have had AV contracts since last year. And when they go back to say, OK, we're ready now for this year. And then the AV company says, well, it's going to be 30 grand more. And it puts them in a hole. Yeah. You know, so so what are there no lessons learned? Like, what is the best way for them? So you remember that stat you said earlier? Fifty eight percent are new. There, there yeah, are lessons learned. The, that's so, the worst the, part is the because the problem is, is that they haven't gone through the trenches of what we've are. You see, all of us here in this room have 10 plus years of experience in the business. They have not. So if they don't have a partner that not has me. 10 plus years experience, no one's telling them. <laughs> that. Does that make more. sense? So we are literally repeating history a little bit. Yeah. So that's why I've, I've been a big proponent of saying, if you are new to the business, trust me, lean on someone that's been in here because let's not repeat the same mistakes that we've already gone through. But it's, it's hard too yeah. because typically the people who are newer to the business, you know, first of all, I think it's very important that we have new oh, I, industry. Oh, I, I think was that's new. a great Remember, thing. Yeah. But the downside of it is that they typically underbid those of us who have been in the industry for a long time. So they get the contracts. They don't really know what they're doing. They don't know how to budget. They surprise the clients as much as the AV companies and these other vendors because they yeah. all of a sudden at the end, like, wait a minute, this is way more than we thought we were going to spend. And it's hard for the companies to understand who they need to hire and why. That's why people like you and all of us who have been in the business for a long time, that experience is yeah. ultimately what we're selling. No, because, absolutely. Because, you know, absolutely. we've been through not just the pandemic, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, the recessions before that and the problems. Right. <laughs> Liz, would you go to South by Southwest to pick up ideas for activations for your clients? Is that like the kind of thing that would appeal to you? Are you asking player? me, Michelle? No, no Liz. Liz. Oh, Liz. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I know I, what. You'll go. It has been an event on my like, oh, that would be nice one day. However, mm -hmm. you know, if I, I have never put the money towards booking a trip and going, and that says something. Um, I do think to Dahlia's point, you can see a lot of that online. And so it's kind of like, oh, unless I have a client who's paying me to go, I'm not going to go this year, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think it's interesting. I, I do wonder if the shift will be away from big, big festival. I mean, but then again- Well, I can already tell you in tech, it already then. has moved away. So I yeah. should mention that, is that a lot, a lot more of them have challenged us to pick key cities where their customers and partners are and do smaller, higher end road activations. Show. Road yes. show. I knew. We're, we're even, I'm trying to find a new word. So I know that is in the road show word, but I'm trying to find a new word because Bruno. it's not quite a road show because we're not, we're not trying to share the exact same topic, but we are trying to lean in and, and come to them. But yes. it is, it is different because think about it. You're now doing it in, let's say four cities and, and it's not necessarily cheaper than the bigger one, but you have to think about it differently because again, everyone is so busy what do you do to bring them to you? Now, I will say one thing because Liz, when she answered that question about South by, it made me think. So I have been on the hunt for, yeah, what is the next like big festivalization or whatnot? I'm actually, and this is not being promoted. Like they, they did, they are not sponsoring. I wish they, I wish they were because I paid a lot of money. I'm going and I'm going to, so ask me in about a month and a half if it was worth it. I am planning to go at Summit at the Sea. I don't know if y'all have ever followed this group. I followed them prior to the pandemic. And they used to do these very high-end curated creative meetups in like Aspen and San Diego and, and Phoenix or, or, you know, wherever. And they decided they're wanting to now take 3,200 of us and put us on a boat and where we have to ideate and, and kind of, you know, get creative. Um, I'm going in May because I'm very fascinated and curious by, is this the new way? Like you just said, it's instead of 300,000 people at a festival, is this the curated way of trying to go to an event and get new ideas and also meet and get new sales prospects? So ask me in about a month and a half because I'll be going there. You and I'll take it like my worst nightmare of an event. <laughs> <laughs> on a cruise boat with 3,000 people boat. with nowhere to go. 
it's like, what if after like the first four hours, you're like, this is not for me. Like, you know, I, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm going to make a mess. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. So, so, but here's the thing. So, um, and I know we're over, but it seems everybody's engaged. So I think we're good with staying over. But mm -hmm. uh, Dana's late. So we have to amuse Dana in a bit. Okay. So, but the whole idea is I do think there is going to be a space for certain attendees or event participants where it is curated, where right. it is smaller, where it is a, an experience and then the, the content and the networking and the, um, the exchange is going to be that layer, yeah. but it has to be that experience. So boat, for example. Yep. And I do think this is where there's going to have to be a reset of expectations and verbiage and language, meaning like a South by Southwest is not a lead gen. Yeah. South by Southwest is immersive because mm -hmm. you then have to set the, no pun intended, stage for the brands to actually do something other mm -hmm. than a photo booth. Yeah. And it, it, and it is all about a brand experience. Yeah. What are you doing for me as a brand? Not about leads. It's not about the fishbowl. Correct. It is it is truly about like, you know, going to an amusement park. But the reason why I want to stress it is because not only corporate, anybody that's doing event design has to set the expectations with the verbiage that they use. Yeah. That like when you're selling something, oh, you're coming in as an exhibitor, you're gonna get so many leads, you won't know what to do with yourself. Yeah, that's that's the worst. I know that is the worst. I cringe when I hear that. <laughs> but when you when you set them up and you say you're going to be an exhibitor and lead gen and the lead retrieval, and that's the first bullet, you're setting yourself up for sale. You're actually setting up your biz dev for sale. And so like this is where I need, I think we need to just like hit a pause on how are we mark like how are we marketing these yeah. these shows anymore? Because it's it's not the same, and we don't want to have a same old same old trade show. Yeah. You don't want to lose your new verticals or new type of attendees, no matter how young they are, yeah. no matter what they're focused on. Like right now, it, it's the same as we went to seafood show. We did a LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, we called it Empowerment Hub, and there was a there was a a, a like a, a sliver of a, of a, of their attendee type that was lost on the show mm -hmm. floor. And it was those that were brokers between the big boys and between yeah. the, the fishermen. Yeah. And they had no place to stay. They, they did not have a home. So this is where, like, this is where us as event professionals, as you, as an agency, you come in and you so unsurface all of these opportunities. Yeah. And I think this is where we have to like really not only ask about the goals, why in the hell are you still saying exhibitors on a virtual platform? I what? agree. That is the word. <laughs> yeah. So again, have we not learned anything? So it all, I think comes down to yeah. how are you, how are you spinning this yeah. basically? I agree. So, um, but yeah, cool. And happy GMID day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, what else? Uh, Dana's question. Dana so, okay. question. She said she's late, but did Cindy have commentary on content sessions? Oh, you so off for a second. Question. Fine. Dana Dana. Mine went for content yeah. only, no parties, waited in line, and said it was worth every penny and more. Yeah. yeah. So she's talking about South by, I assume, not just like yeah. a, a general thing. Yeah. So, yeah. No, there is definitely, it, that's what I love about South by is that sometimes when you go into a, a panel, you have no idea other than like maybe the topic of what they showed off, but you hear what they have to say. And that's when you get inspired and you learn something new. There is still that uh, serendipitous moment at South by and that's, and, and it's, and how can you not have that when you have over a thousand literally education content sessions? And that is the one thing why I will say it's overwhelming, but at the same time it benefits South by mm -hmm. because literally you can Google or search in their app what you want to, to listen to. And as long as you plan ahead and you go to those talks, you can be inspired and learn something new. 
I've, I've definitely have over the 20 years I've been going to South by of, of like sitting in on topics that are not normally in my wheelhouse that are not event marketing that are not uh, anything related to what I do, but just to be inspired and learn what they have to share because there is so much going on in our world that you should try to stay as educated and curious as possible. But I thought when I first read Dana, and by the way, hi, Dana. Um, when I read Dana's question, I thought she was talking about what if you were a client that only wants to do that kind of meeting and event? Because I will still say there are those that need to be that and they can't have all this immersive experience. I would challenge them to make sure that you can't do this online or do it in a way that, um, or even try to bring in a little bit of fun during the break because no one wants to be talked to and be bored to death. Sure, sure. But good content still reigns. Yes. That's what oh, good content for is key. Yeah. Good content is still king. I, I, I am Even in an immersive environment, yes. I know that's what you're focusing on is how yeah. do you deliver the message? You know, it's not Correct. just about giving people a fun experience, but Correct. what are you well, trying to get people to know? It's tangible. It's something you can bring back to the office to justify that exactly. you've been there. You can't go back to the office and, and you know, really talk in, in the parties a way <laughs> about an immersive experience, like in the Roku booth, like People think, well, that's really cool, but uh, obviously you just went on vacation. Oh, you, have to, you know, the content is what's driving the justification, yeah. I think. Yes. I actually, one of the one of the most exciting articles that I saw about South by Southwest is one speaker who did his entire presentation via AI while oh, he yes. was on stage. Um, and even with the voice change and with the content being designed yeah. and everything like that. And I was like, I, I would, that's my immersive type of <laughs> session. But um, I, I do think, you know, this is again, and this is the challenge. And I think this is where even corporate planner planners will need to put more emphasis on is the design and the delivery of the content. Yes. Um, and, you know, I, I joke, but not really, is where um, with everything that's booming around us via mm -hmm. AI or mid-journey or chat, mm -hmm. GPT and all of this, if I ever see clip art. And your, uh, your deck. <laughs> no, no, we will because everything always goes happen. the other way. So to get noticed, so, so this is this is where I would think that there will be some robot like looking at the clip art and changing it into like very inappropriate photos just to like play with the speaker because there is no excuse at the moment except oneself like yeah. except the speaker but um was there a I've seen clip art. was there a metaverse were people talking about metaverse that yes, but good. not as much as previous years. I'm going to be honest. Um, because Silicon Valley Bank crash happened on that Friday, that mm -hmm. ended up being the ad hoc topic that not, uh, and then it got, and then they quickly shifted to again, AI and, and yeah, but, and then there's also a lot of media topics. And then if you're in the, for the celebrity scene, there's a whole nother realm of that. And there's still a lot of influencers too. So, so those were the, at least the trending topics that I saw. Cool. A lot of people wanted to know how to become a content creator. There you go. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> you're, 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 are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> um, CEX is happening the first couple days of May, if anybody wants to be a content creator. So there. Uh, no. I didn't even know I was helping plug something. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh. Register now. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions for Cindy? So is 2023 going to be harder than uh, COVID you know, years? I hope not, but I will be honest with you. 2023 is feeling a lot like 2022. Now, mind you, our 2020 year ended on a very high note, but it did not start picking up until June. So yeah. it really does depend on how these layoffs continue to happen in Austin because we have every major software company here in town, Amazon, Meta, Google, every single one. Sadly, every single one has announced a layoff. So it is a very weird uh, feeling in town right now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I am very optimistic. I tend to be a glass half full kind of person. So I'm hopeful that I will start to see the uptick. Um, our fall looks good, but I would love to, of course, spread out our workload and I'd love to see a busier, uh, April, May, June, July, August, you know, all the way before fall hits in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think 2023 is going to be, uh, a challenging year prior to than than what we went through 
um, especially for event profs that are trying to re, um, reinvent themselves, going from the virtual to like, oh, I can do this type of thing, um, as well as, uh, and that was just one example, but then also convincing and handholding and being, you know, the therapist, the advisor, the executor for all things events uh, for organizations and their clients. And you nailed it when you said, you know, it's like you have to start all over again, trying to know who your internal champions are, trying to convince the C-suite, trying to convince the event uh, team, you know, how to get a a buy-in from the C-suite and all of this. And with all the factors, you know, that you you sort of can't control av being one of them which i think should be its own session to be honest if you have Uh, not interviewed someone recently you should because again the cost the costs have gone up it's not just the equipment it's the people really and think about it if you have not paid uh if you have not looked at salaries and whatnot everything has gone up because again it's cost of living it's what people deserve and and we have to be fair because this is a very hard job yeah Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Cindy, yes, thank for being you. with us. This was fun. And we now have like a, a Java type of Shapiro. <laughs> I, I need to see what that looks like. But um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And um, we're, we're, it's not all doomsday here. It's no, all good. Because I'm this so is optimistic. where the opportunities, you got to exploit the chaos that we're in yet again, because why not? That's why we're in this industry. It's all good. But um If you have any other topics you want to discuss for the next coming months, let us know. Um, Our next show is April 6th, if I'm not mistaken. And Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a special guest, uh, Bruno and uh, uh, Liz. We actually have Adam Perry is going to join us for the next show. So we're going to talk about Event Tech Live. uh, That's coming to Las Vegas, April 26th, 27th. And we hope you have a fantastic GMID day. Yes. Time. Yes. Thank you, you so much. reach out to Andrea Doyle. Yes, I saw that. I'll reach out to her. <laughs> See ya.